Yo guys, hello and welcome back to the FIFA 23 West Ham United career mode. And today was, a, I would want to say a doozy, but it's going to be fairly simple running. I'm going to kick things off straight away. FA Cup away to Ipswich. Part of me contemplate a play in this, but cannot be bothered. Hopefully we win. That's going to be a replay. Uh, Shirky innings getting our goals. Slightly annoying that we've not uh, come away with three points there, but hey, you know. What can you do? What can you do? That is very depressing, I must say. Uh, I think Danny Ings has now reached his peak. I'm not surprised, to be honest, with the uh, with that. We're pretty much done with January as well, by the way. I can't believe that. We're only like a, a few bits in, uh, but we're almost already we're almost already done with January. Which is mad, really, when you think about it. Um, given how we've already played most of this season. And we're just about getting started with the career mode as well. You know, only 15 or so episodes in, 16 episodes in. This is a big game. Burnley versus us. Two very different ends of the table. But could be uh, a really interesting one. And obviously... We're, we're going to try get ourselves back towards uh, winning another Premier League. Hopefully that's the that's the end goal. Uh, and that's that's what we we hope to achieve this season. Obviously if we do, then it'll be scenes. But you never know. We've got to play the other team in Claret and Blue. One of the other teams in Claret and Blue in this season. In, uh, this this division. And we do get a 3-1 win. Alfonso Davies getting a goal, you know. And Nerf Aghead as well. That is stuff we love to see. Some very good goal, uh, some very good results going our way here in the opening bits of this season. Ibrahim, I, I don't think he's going to get any loan time at all. Uh, yeah, we're, we're we're almost done with with January. I can't believe it, and I think we've just flown through this because I've seen so many more games in this one. Arsenal went one side, Ben Rahman, not surprising given how many goals he scores against them. Or how many goals he scores against them every time. So yeah, Lucas Paquette. Man City won our best player for £121 million. Pounds. Oh, absolutely not. The man's world class. There's not a there's not a chance in God's green earth that I'm ever letting Lucas Paquetta go to Manchester City in the save. I would Rather shit in my hands and clap than let him go to the enemy. But you know, if they made a tempting offer, maybe I, maybe I could be persuaded. I mean, that is a very tempting offer, but it's not going to be enough. There's there's absolutely no way that I'd, I'd I'd sell the Brazilian Magnifico. Um, yeah, a replay against Ipswich as well. I'm just not going to play it as. I fully have the confidence in the boys. We <laughs> almost spoke way too soon. I had the confidence. Fuck it. How many penalties? What the fuck? And all the way. Oh my god, we rescued it in the 90th minute as well, by the way. Jesus. That's, that's not, it's not looking good, Brev. When like you're almost losing to fucking Ipswich. Of all teams, Ipswich. Who did we get in the cup? We don't know. Cool. Oh, nice. Cool. I suppose the transfer deadline day is not even really done yet. What is our What is our current finances? Forty three. I don't think we need to sign anyone really. Realistically, I I think the team is good enough as it is. We'll just deal with some uh, whatever you know offers we get coming through. Leverkusen want Aged? Absolutely not. Not not doing it at all. He's he's our best centre off, and for good reason. Zuma transfer offer, Man United. So if it was any other club, I may have entertained it, but it's Man United. Oh, Roma want the skipper. They want Deckers. Spinazzola and seventy-eight mil and eighty million. That's not that's not very good. See, Juventus putting a thirty million offer on the table is. Is almost good business, and it gives us time to go and find a suitable replacement. 
I love Zuma. He's been brilliant for us in the safe. But is is getting thirty million for him gonna be that little bit better? Do you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna haggle with him and I'm gonna set my price high at like thirty five million. If they don't want him they don't they're not getting him. To uh, cut a long story short, they uh, they did not offer more than twenty seven point one million, so they were not getting him. Hey, that's that's their loss really. Absolutely their loss. Liam Delap to a PSG is an interesting one to look at. Will Prowse offer? Oh, 30 million. You know, I don't even think we spent that much on him. I can't remember how much we paid. We probably got 27 million or something like that. I, just, I can't remember. To be completely honest, it's been a while. So, what is Joe Gildhard doing at fucking PSG? What is any of these players doing at PSG, man? 4.7 million from Manto. I think Liam Delap in real life is worth a fair bit more than um, 4.7 million. But, hey. Uh, who am I to complain? That is deadline day done. Um, unbelievable, really. And now we're getting transfer offers in for other players as well. Yeah, twenty-one million to Benfica. No. Yeah, we're gonna get it started. The first like proper game of this episode gonna be against Aston Villa. Hopefully, we can demolish the villains. We and um. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? That'd be, that'd be the dream. The ideal start to this, this episode eh, would be... I mean, we've really picked up some good points and some good some good results. It's just a case of, you know, getting a little bit more. I think if we just... If we keep winning, we should be fine. I think pretty much goes about saying, really, doesn't it? If we, if we win, we'll be fine. But we are still top. We've got a five-point lead. Let's hope to make that an eight-point lead. Uh, a very good Aston Villa team, by the way. I, I don't know where Z uh, Sané's gone, but they definitely do have Sané. Um, yeah, be interesting to see what this Aston Villa team have got and what they can do against a us. For it's a landmark day for me. What is it? A hundred game as manager. This is this is biblical stuff. But yeah, we'll see how this uh, match goes. The newspapers have been going heavily on the Dimitri Payet story this week. There are many who believe Ooh, this in. Oh, and the goat has done it again. As they're talking about another goat considering retirement. I hope that's not the case for Dimitri Payet. But onto the important thing about the game that is going on at the minute. Zilawanka Skamaka has scored yet again for us. He is in sensational form. Just, you know, dummy runs to the defender. And then left foot, right foot. He is, in fact, as Gary Neville would say, devastating. Um, and that is a lead against Aston Villa. It gives us a little bit of a, a hard time at the minute. Oh, deck. Oh, he's found Skamaka again. Oh, it's a great stop from Emmy Martinez. That could have been brilliant for us. Oh, and Gravenberch. Oh, it's a great save again from Emmy Martinez. Oh, my God. Oh, no, that's tight. Oh, what a save. I was so content with that being a guy. Oh, Bowen. Oh. How's that not gone in? Oh, the football. Oh, Skamaka's going to... Oh, he's strengthened him. And Skamaka, yeah. Never in doubt when Gilo Anka Skamaka gets one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. And that is goal number 30 for the season in the Premier League already. He is breaking his own records at this rate. What was he getting the first season? 34 Premier League goals or something like that? He is on 30 already. It's only been about 25 games or so for him. That is incredible that he's been that good for us in the save. That is half-time here against Aston Villa. 2-0 to the good. I think fairly deserved, fairly dominant. They could have had a goal, but, you know, they didn't. Ariola saved it. It was a very good save. I was perfectly happy with them having it, but, you know, it, they weren't good enough. And Skamaka, you know, shown the difference in terms of the quality of finishing. Yeah, they've barely had a sniff. We've had most of the ball, a lot of the chances as well. And, yeah, I'm fairly content with the half. With the half. It's a game we should be winning, realistically. I mean, no disrespect to Aston Villa, they're having a fantastic season in real life. 
but on the game it's a different story and I'm ecstatic to be in the lead so yeah let's just keep it going confirms Spurs have got their man Stuart well it's an exciting transfer isn't it he'll add a lot of well, Skamaka in again for the hat trick and there is no stopping Gilo Anka Skamaka right now another superb hat trick for our number seven he is in the form of his life I'm running out of superlatives for the man. Every time he gets one-on-one, -on -one, it's a goal. There is no stopping him when he's in this sort of form. Every single game, he's odds to score at least two. And it's just becoming routine for him. Edge his way through. Oh, it's a good stop from fucking Areola there. Oh, and they've let Danny Ings have all the freedom. Oh, it's off the bar. And the rebound's in. There we go. Jared Bowen does force home the rebound. I thought for all the world that I was going to stay out. But Bowen volleys home. I don't know if it's a volley. He just thumps home the four for the game. It is lovely stuff. Danny is very unlucky not to have the, the goal there. Uh, no, it is a volley. Do you know what? I stand corrected. That is a brilliant volley from Jared Bowen. Half volley. Yeah. Hits into the ground. No stopping that from Eden Martinez. And we have got a fourth. Daniel Malin. Ings. Ings. Oh. Horse is a great save from Mark. Corney. Oh, it's hit the post. That could have been a fifth. Can they take advantage of the situation? Or Maxi. He's in, and Corne does make it 5-0. We have absolutely thumped Aston Villa here. Completely and utterly dominant. It's been so one-sided. You know, some of these games, it's just sometimes it feels like you've just got everything going for you. And this has been one of those games. And this is one of those tricky little tests against a side like Aston Villa. And yet again, I've not actually asked him to outside the foot. He has just done that on his own accord. Every single time that happens, they do it on their own accord. But you know what? If it goes in, I can't really complain. And Ings, this time, does find the back of the net. Danny Ings making it 6-0. Getting a goal against his former team. And that is game, set and match again. It's another six-goal haul for us. It's just a great first touch. Get him away from the player that we sent to Aston Villa on loan. It's a great finish on that left foot from, from Danny Ings. Hasn't been as involved this season as he was in the last year. But he's still getting goals off the bench for us. Which is exactly what we need from him. That is an unbelievable uh, dominant win from us. Skamaka with another hat-trick. Danny Ings with a goal off, off of the bench as well. Corner getting a goal. And was, the other one? was it Jared Bowen? I think it was. That is a superb victory against the team we probably expected to beat. And we definitely deserve to win in the, ver in the end. We made it very easy on ourselves. Aston Villa didn't really put up much of a fight. Uh, I don't really think they had much going for them in that second half. They had a couple of half chances, but they weren't. They just, just simply weren't as good as we were, which is beautiful. And that is exactly the way we want to play the first game of this episode. And following on from that good victory from uh, from ourselves against we even play Aston Villa. That was who we played. We've now got the big test around the 16 first leg against Borussia Dortmund at the Signal Aduna. This could be uh, an unbelievable game. I mean, if we're going off of their predicted 11 or the probable 11, we shouldn't really face too many issues. But you never know with this game. So we're just going to have to suck it and see it, really, and see what we can achieve. Uh, but, I mean, Champions League nights. We obviously want these to continue. We want to do well in this competition. I'm not saying we're going to go and win it. There's obviously going to be some difficulties along the way, but we obviously want to go on and do our best. We, you know, start with the hope of winning. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But Mason Mount as well is unreal. But yeah, we're going to see how this game goes against Borussia Dortmund. James Ward-Prowse is going to look over to try and find Zaniolo. 
Oh, it's a good hit. Not quite the way we wanted it, but good hit nonetheless. Good. Some risky passing. Johnson's going to find Bowen. That's a brilliant ball. Jared Bowen. He's got Zaniolo to look for, and Zaniolo makes no mistake. And that is a fantastic finish from the Italian. Another left footed volley from Nicolo Zaniolo. What lovely play to break away from the free kick, though. And that is Zaniolo, his very best finding the back of the net with a volley there. Could have, could have probably taken that a little bit easier on himself, but ball in from Bowen's brilliant. It just makes absolutely no mistake. And Koble's off to fucking no man's land. Just opens up all that side. He is top quality when it with his volleys and his finishing, Zaniolo. Ings. Oh, that's a good start. I don't know why I said Ings. <laughs> but yeah, good save. And Zaniolo picks it up. Zaniolo has found Danny Ings. Danny Ings who's come on for Skamaka. Big opportunity for him. And Danny Ings has dragged it wide. That's a huge chance wasted from the Englishman. Ings has slipped through here again. Ings this time, not quite. Another good stop. It's lovely stuff though. And Zaniolo, oh, it's a lovely goal. And Zaniolo has done it again for us in the Champions League. That is beautiful stuff from us. The ball from Paqueta over the top to find Bowen. And Bowen to cut it back. That is scintillating stuff from us there. And taking a two-goal advantage here at Borussia Dortmund. It's a lovely pass. Just absolutely pinpoint. And Zaniolo again makes no mistake and just roofs it with his finish. Absolutely brilliant. And Zaniolo having a very good time here in Germany. Just a poor touch. Alec. That's a good stop. Good stop again from Vaklik. Done very well for Quetta. Brilliantly done. He's got Danny Ings through the middle. And Danny Ings. Oh, that's calm and composed from Danny Ings to make it 3-0 does take that chance he's had a couple so far in this game obviously the one he put wide he put one straight at the keeper as well that's composure personified to just peel away from the defender take that touch away from Koval as he dives in and then rolls it into the back of the net to make it free brilliant stuff from us once again we are running riot in Germany there's almost no need for a second leg at this point it's half time a very good half pretty much dominated by us at least in the meet, in the terms of attacking it, we might not have had as much of a ball, but Zaniolo has had the half of his life. Probably could have ended it with a hat trick, but a very good half from us indeed in Dortmund. But we can't take our eyes off of Dortmund because they probably can get back into it if they really wanted to. They've not looked too threatening, but they've had chances, and one goal could change this entire game. But at the minute, it looks fairly comfortable for us. Um, Kind of hoping that we can carry on that in the second half and we can just get a couple of more and pretty much just seal off the tie. That's all I really want to do. Um, hopefully we can manage that in the second half, but yeah, let's give it a goal. Then they've signed a really good player, one that will certainly improve their team. And Ings, oh, it's so close to a fourth and a second for Danny Ings, but that is agonisingly close from that shot. Just looks to roll it into the far corner. It's not quite got the curve on it. And Davies has picked up. Davies got space to drive, and he does have space to drive. He keeps going. Alfonso Davies. Oh my God! It could have been an unbelievable solo. Turkey. Oh, and it could be. Oh my God! It's the most fortunate fourth goal, but it's so deserved. Ward Prowse is going to claim it, but that's a hundred percent an own goal. And a complete mix-up from the Dortmund defence has gifted, off a, gifted us a fourth here. Unbelievable stuff. Koble just palms it straight, kicks it straight to him. It's a good save from Koble, but unfortunate for him that he's palmed it straight into Schlotterbeck's foot. And it's gone in. Maybe Wolfrowski could have done slightly better with the initial shot, but oh well. And Haller, 
does get a goal back for Dortmund. It's a frustrating goal to concede because it just kept pinging about to him, but it would be the former man from West Ham, Sebastian Haller, to get them back within a slight grasp of the game. And it's well worked, he just holds them off. Yeah. Frustrating, I probably could have done a bit better defensively, but yeah. Annoying, but what can you do? It's a good finish from Haller. And they are, I don't want to say back in the tie, but back in to some degree. Bowen. Could he potentially drag home a fifth? Falls to Ben Rama, and there is the fifth. And you can't say we haven't deserved it, but side Ben Rama restores the four-goal lead here. And we have take we are absolutely running away with this one. So yeah. A good uh, I don't want to say it's a good finish. It's a good run from Bowen, good play to get it. It's a good finish from Ben Rama to be fair. He's under a lot of pressure from the defender. And he's got a tight angle to fire it into, and he's done well. But would you argue it's a simple finish? Maybe not. Yeah. We will happily take that though. A fifth. Genuinely the last kick of the ball. Dortmund kick it off and it ends 5-1 to us here. Unfortunately we had the early injury to Skamaka, but Danny Ings did his dues and uh, helps us along our way to an important first leg victory against Borussia Dortmund. We completely dominated them really. A lot of the time our final pass could have been slightly better and we might have ended up with a few more goals, but who knows. That is that's all she wrote from the first leg though and interestingly enough we actually did relatively well you know, I was expecting it to be tighter than that but it was com it was comfortable for us so yeah that well, is a fantastic victory to take back to London just a little bit more transfer news for you we have made a contract offer for next season for Anthony Martial and I think this will be a good step in our direction uh, because next year yeah, we might look to move on some like Danny Ings. He might be eventually nearing that point where he might retire. So Anthony Martial, 28 years old, for, for nothing, you could, you could get a lot worse. Um, yeah. And speaking of the injury, uh, or speaking of our striker situation and things like that, uh, unfortunately, Zulawanka Skamaka has picked up a four-week injury, which is not what we wanted, uh, especially to a player so important to us. He's got so many goals for us this season. It's just, it is, it's so frustrating to see that he's got that injury, but there's, there's not many things you can do about it. Even bigger game against Arsenal. And of course, we've lost our top scorer, our top, our, our top player, really. Um, but, you know, I have great faith in Danny Ings. I think, you know, if once he gets a run in the team... And I think this could be something that he needed this season because he's not played as many minutes. A lot of his games have been off the bench. So this could be just what he needs to re-spark himself because um, the man got nearly 30 goals last year off the bench and is, and is basically the cup striker. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, and yeah, we just, we'll just have to see because I, I, I hope for his sake that he can get on and score a couple here. I think he scored a hat-trick. Uh, when we came here in the FA Cup last season, but who knows? My initial thought was I might play uh, Zaniola or Bowen up top, but I've, I'm going to give Danny Ings a run up front and see how it goes for now. Yeah, see how it goes at the Emirates. And straight out of play off the keeper's boot, it will be a throw in. Bowen, oh! I don't know what to do. That's an outrageous strike from Bowen. Absolutely brilliant. Jared Bowen just hitting him from distance. Well, they they just they let him do it. They they go, why not let's let Jared Bowen hit it on his left foot? The man's been in superb form this season. They just let him absolutely twat one and Runnison, who's kicked out our players, and that's the result. An absolute scorcher from Jared Bowen. Every time those go in, I feel a little bit bad because the keepers always get done dirt. Quetta. Zaniolo. Oh, it's a good stop by Runnison, though. Great save. And Rice. Oh, it's another absolute belter, and it's Declan Rice 
who's got this one. Two absolute peaches here against Arsenal. What a game. A, a lovely game for the for a stunning finish. Declan Rice on his left foot. You just they just they, they shape it up for you, they stand off you and let you have the shots. And they should learn better now after especially that Jared Bowen goal. But that is an absolute corker from Declan Rice. A real skipper's goal who's got an eye for the net now. Oh, that could be a chance. And that is going to be a goal back. Uh, very frustrating, but we've lost the ball and we've, we've paid the price there as Mbroya Iglesias pulls one back for Arsenal. Very odd signing for Iglesias to be there. They're going mental. They're acting like they've won the league. We've lost it high, uh, high in our own half. And, yeah, it's just a sloppy error. And we've been punished for it. And it blazes us. The Spaniard makes no mistake with an open net. I don't know. They're selling him so short, these passes. Paqueta. Oh, it's a good stop from Runnison, though. Corner. I did not think that had taken a deflection. Oh my god. Oh! How has that gone in? That is an unreal strike from Bowen. <laughs> Runnison is just uh, not having a good day with shots from outside the penalty area. That is an absolutely unreal strike from Bowen. It just comes out to him nice, drops nice on the volley. That is a, stun a stunning finish. We've scored three goal of the season contenders in one game. And that is an unreal strike. Goalkeeper has not covered himself in a lot of glory. But take nothing away from the finish. That is a brilliant half. I mean, some very good goals have been scored. Goalkeeping not, not really at the highest calibre on Arsenal's end. But no complaints from us. Uh, we lead 3-1 with some very, very good goals. That, that second Bowen goal was just superb. It doesn't look nice because the goalkeeper's basically been lobbed on his line, but it's really it, it was it's just the audaciousness of the strike. I mean, it's just caught him off guard. Yeah, we could easily be winning by a few more. Their goalkeeper it has to be fair to him and to credit to him has made some very good saves. But yeah, we we hopefully should just go out in the second half and yeah see this game out. Oh, it's a good stop. No way! No way is that a penalty. I was about to be like, oh, it's an incredible save from Areola. How is that a penalty? No, I've... Oh, come on, man. I've not pushed a button. That's so frustrating. I've not done anything there. It's afters anyway. It's after the shot's been taken. And we'll save this. Yes! Have that, Arsenal. Absolutely. Hold your L. Oh, come on. It's so fortunate the way it's fell to him, but it's a great finish from Odegaard, to be fair. It's just... Kind of, it's so annoying when you can see goals like that, where it's just fallen to him so kindly off of the back of, like... Like, win the ball. It's just... I don't know. Just really... Really frustrating. Oh my god, no. Iglesias, no. I don't believe this. They've not been that good. And they've got two... Oh, just so fucking casual from Davies. It's a good finish though. Maybe Ariola could do better, I don't know. Really, really frustrating to have conceded three goals here. I don't know what Ario is doing there, but fair enough. Got to go again. We should have seen this out, but it's not been that easy for us. Bowen. Fucking hell. Finally restores our lead. Gets his hat-trick, by the way. A hat-trick for Jared Bowen at the Emirates. He's thoroughly deserved that as well. It's a great pass. Great little bit of play, and Bowen just rolls it into the corner. Lovely stuff, and we do deserve to be winning, don't get me wrong. But Arsenal have been all over us in the second half. It's just a lovely bit of play from Zaniolo to find him. It's a good finish. Good, strong finish from Bowen. 
absolutely, you know, it's the only place he could put it really. And he does it to perfection and restores our lead. That was a very stressful second half, but we get the job done in the end. Jared Bowen, with possibly the three best shots of his career, <laughs> two worldies and the winner. You can't complain for a day's work from Jared Bowen there. Unreal from him. That second goal was superb. I mean, the first goal was good as well. Every every goal we scored in this game was blinding. And we've, I think we deserve to win. But we made it very, very difficult for ourselves in that second half. By just letting them have a little bit more of the ball. Giving them half the chances that they had. So, yeah. Frustratingly enough. To have, to have won the game. Yeah, really happy. But in the manner we did it, not, not so much. Because it should have been a little bit easier than it was. Uh, but that does keep us eight points clear of Manchester City. So we're going to be breathing that on our necks. And it gives me an option now because Danny Ings didn't have the greatest of games. Uh, to be completely honest. Didn't really get involved. I know it's, it's difficult because he's against good players. But frustrating because he's the, the only other senior striker. So it could be a case of us moving someone like Zaniola or even Jared Bowen up to, up front for those um, for the, the time in which uh, I can't remember his name now. Skamak is out, but we're gonna keep trying with him. I'm gonna simulate this game against Brighton. Just see ourselves through. There we go. Bowen getting an, another goal. Danny Ings got one. He did miss a penalty, but he scored, so helped us to a win and. Uh, it's another big three points. It's three points closer to retaining our Premier League trophy. And now we've got to play another cup game. And we've got so many cup fixtures at the minute. Thomas, you're literally going to play in the next game, lad. You can't complain. You're literally you're getting games. You're playing the Champions League, lad. And, yeah, I don't know. We're going to make some changes for this game against the uh, the mighty we were playing Cardiff I think I call everyone the mighty that's just a thing I'm doing at the minute but yeah this will be the last game for the episode we're not going to play it obviously but hopefully we should see ourselves through to the quarter finals of the FA Cup obviously we want to go one better than we did last season we do get ourselves through to the quarter finals Beating Cardiff 1 0 thanks to a side Ben Rama goal. And that is all she wrote for this episode, really. Nothing more. Any shocks? Brighton beating Arsenal. Big shock. Maybe not too bad of a shock, but yeah. One less team that we probably have to worry about. We're going to end up getting City in the next round, so I don't know why I'm bothering celebrating that. Uh, scout results. I don't really have much to go with, so. Yeah. That is where we are. Ooh. City haven't played, though. But Liverpool are breathing down our necks as well. There's still not a great deal. I mean, we're 11 points clear of Liverpool. Hopefully, we can go oh, 14 points, maybe. It, it might not happen, but who knows. Who do we get in the cup? We've got Norwich. Oh, that couldn't have been better for us. Norwich in the quarterfinals. And that could be a massive, massive... We could end up in the semi-finals of the FA Cup once again. Where, obviously, last season we lost to uh, to Palace. But hopefully this year we, we don't quite manage that. Because I do want to win an FA Cup. It would be nice. But yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will speak to you in the next one. Peace out.